some prepared notes, but I want to say a few things about Bob. And uh, so, uh, the last time I introduced Bob was in 2006 here at Rosary Hall, where we had gathered to celebrate the publication of his book, um, Last Survivors. By the end of this month, he will have completed his second book, Middletown, part of the Images of America series scheduled to be released in spring 2009. So sandwiched between his busy schedule of chairing the CIS department, teaching and writing books, Bob managed to travel to Fangeau, France this summer as part of a trip for Dominican-sponsored colleges and universities. Each year, faculty administrators, students, and staff from around the United States form a learning community and take part in study and excursions to historic sites in southern France with the focus on St. Dominic and the order he began nearly 800 years ago. I remember when Bob returned home from Fangio. He called me a few days later and sounded very excited. He said he was exhilarated by what he had learned of Dominican history, and he spoke of what he had seen. He even managed to spend four days in Paris, and he talked about the people he had met. He called his experience the trip of a lifetime. He was so inspired, he purchased the Ro a Rosetta Stone software so he could begin to learn Spanish in preparation for his next trip. And he even brought back gifts for everyone. French berets in every imaginable color, red, <laughs> blue, purple, yellow, pink. He said he had cleaned out the gift shop. I dare say there are a number of you who undoubtedly received one of those berets, although I might add I did not. <laughs> Bob Hubbard's world is shaped by ideas. He's intellectually curious and interested in people and open to new viewpoints. The last time I introduced him to you, I mentioned the many websites he's created, from one on sloths, to Loretta Young, to Maurice Chevalier. For 45 years, he's been collecting autographs of famous people. After his talk today, I encourage you to ask him about this. He has hundreds. He loves to do research, and he's conversant in topics such as from Thomas More to Padre Pio to Eamon de Valera. The ligament that connects these seemingly disparate subjects is his passion for learning. His is a spirit that pursues knowledge for its own sake. He is the embodiment of the tradition of liberal arts. Recently, Bob discovered that he's related to Albert Hubbard, who in his own right was a remarkable guy. After his first trip to England in 1894, he decided to write short story, a short essays about authors whose homes he had visited. And so for the next 20 years, he published monthly an essay about a famous person. And for 14 of those 20 years, one essay a month was put into a compilation of books that eventually um, were sold. I own the entire set. They're leather bound. Here's one of them. I've loved Albert all my life. With his encyclopedic mind, Hubbard was considered one of the most learned men of his time. The series of books was called Little Journeys. There's clearly a genetic link here. It's not surprising that Bob Hubbard relished the chance to take this trip to Fangeau to learn more about the Dominicans, who happened to be sponsors of our college. For Bob, it was only natural that he apply for faculty welfare and development funds, Sean O'Connor wanted me to mention this, uh, to travel and learn about the beginnings of the Dominican order one that has certainly played an important role in Bob's life as he's been at Alberta's for nearly 15 years. Bob Hubbard's intellectual energy is increasing. Like falling rocks whose speed accelerates exponentially as they drop, I think I've been doing too much invitation insight reading, uh, <laughs> he is growing in his intellectual energy. Maybe this has something to do with the fact that last week Bob celebrated a milestone birthday. <laughs> Um, perhaps he fears time's running out, who can say? <laughs> Regardless of the reasons, one can only imagine what he'll do next. Perhaps it'll be a balloon ride along the Amazon. He's very interested in rainforests or an excursion to the ruins of Easter Island. In any case, I see a book in, in your future. Hubbard, um, in his little journeys, included this in his profile of Thomas Carlyle. One comfort is that great men taken up in any way are profitable company. We cannot look, however imperfectly, upon a great man without gaining something by it. He is the living fountain of life, which it is pleasant to be near. 
on any terms whatsoever, you will not grudge to wander in his neighborhood for a while. And so today, I invite you to sit back, and together let's wander in Bob's neighborhood.